Hello. Well, today I just wanted to talk about a um, movie that I really love quite a bit. Um, that is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, what to say about this film? Uh, I don't know. Uh, other than it's incredible. You know, it's often cited as one of the greatest films of all time for great reasons. Um, the plot of uh, R. P. McMurphy, played by Jack Nicholson, going into a mental hospital after faking going crazy in order to get out of work at a work farm in lieu of uh, going back to prison, um, it's, it's, it's a very incredible film, honestly. It's a movie that's just, I think a roller coaster is probably the best way you could describe it. There's a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, you know. Jack Nicholson's performance in this is just incredible. If you've never seen this before, um, it's, I think it's quite likely you're going to latch on to him in particular. Um, not just because of it being Jack Nicholson, just because, but because his performance is just that great. Um, <clears throat> Louise Fletcher playing Nurse Ratchet is incredible. Um, she's often described as... <clears throat> The character is as um, one of the greatest movie villains of all time. Um, and as the film goes on, you can definitely uh, see why that is. Um, she believes everything she's doing is good, but her actions and what she says and has done uh, tend to be the exact opposite. And it's like... Uh, She's let uh, the power she's been given go to her head, and so, yeah. Whatever good she may have done at some point uh, seems to uh, be non-existent anymore. Uh, if it does exist, it's in very small little doses. Um, which perhaps you might see in the very beginning of the film, possibly, but even then, uh, after watching it and looking back, if you think something she did was good, you might rethink whether or not she really did anything good in the film. Um, you know, the performance is also by uh, Brad Dorif in his film debut, um, is incredible. Um, uh, Will Sampson as Chief, um, you know, he, he's incredible. Um, I haven't read the book, but from my understanding, the entire book is from Chief's perspective, and um, some have said that would have been a more interesting uh, film if it was from his perspective instead of McMurphy's. Um, which, uh, maybe it would have. Um, I've also heard the film was uh, quite dark. Um, like, darker than the film is. Um, and the film can be fairly uh, dark at times. Um, and the other uh, people who are in the mental hospital, you know, William Redfield, Harding, um, also early appearances of Danny DeVito and Christopher Lloyd are in this film before they were ever on Taxi. Um, it's quite interesting to see them in this film. Um, I remember uh, an interview with Jack Nicholson. He actually said he, you know, he had never seen Danny DeVito ever in anything. And he thought he, that he was actually a crazy person who was in this, uh, you know, like 
this asylum because they filmed in a real mental hospital. So they thought they were just using people who were actual patients. They were just able to, you know, sort of like take direction and read lines fairly competently, you know. Uh, but no, they're all, you know, actors in the film. And they all did a great job. Um, now, you know, this film won many awards. Uh, obviously, won the Big Five Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Actor, Best Actress. Um, I think, um, you know, as I've mentioned before, you know, uh, Jaws is my second favorite film of all time, not only after Star Wars, and I did talk about that film earlier in the year. I do think uh, Jaws is a better movie than One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and would have liked to have seen Jaws win, but um, Cuckoo's Nest is an excellent film, and, you know, uh, don't really see a huge uh, problem with it winning Cook, uh, over Jaws for Best Picture. Um, of course, you know, I always want, uh, I would have liked to have seen my a film I preferred uh, to have won uh, to be the overall winner, but, you know, you know, sometimes you have those, uh, there's a year where there's many of great films up for many awards. Sometimes the one you you know, sometimes that is the winner, sometimes it's not, um, and you just hope when it, whatever wins is a very good film, and not something that five to ten years from now nobody will ever talk about anymore. And people do talk about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, this did play in theaters not too long ago. I didn't get to see it because there's too much stuff going on uh, at the time. So, you know, for me, it's, uh, but I did rewatch this movie. Um, I was going to watch it anyway. But, yeah, I just love watching this film. I hope to see it on the big screen one day. Um, it'll be an incredible experience. Um, but, yeah, um, also Brad Dourif. Uh, his character, Billy, has a stutter. And for everybody who has never seen this movie, I'll just say at the end, something happens and he uh, loses his stutter for a moment. But then uh, uh, Nurse Ratchet comes down on him and then he gets it back. And it's a very sad moment. Um, I'll just say that. And um, But everyone's happy. McMurphy is happy. Everyone's happy when, you know, because what happens and he's lost his stutter. Um, and that's why that's what I mean. Like it's a roller coaster. There's there's highs and lows. You kind of though want it to keep going high and never go low, but like a roller coaster, it's gonna go low. Yeah. Even if you don't want it to. Um, and uh I think things like that are just why it's a film that's remained so beloved and popular over the years. Um, also, uh, this film was made by Milos Forman, um, and if you don't know who Milos Forman is, he's made many other great films. I think another uh, notable movie he has made is Amadeus, about a uh, Wolfgang Mozart, uh, his life, told by Salieri. Um, another great film, another film I love, um, but between the filmography of Milos Forman, this is my favorite film he has ever made. It's a film that, I don't know, I just love watching it over and over. There's just something about it that's very... This is very captivating, and I just, uh, like, I love the story, um, even though, you know, uh, where it goes 
at times, you know, yeah, I, uh, of course you wish it, there were more, some more happier moments, but it fits the film, it fits what goes on in the movie. <clears throat> and um, had they been, had there been more happier moments, maybe the film would not uh, be as uh, beloved or talked about as it is now. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to re uh, really think about in terms of being different, honestly. Uh, other than perhaps uh, the film being told from the chief's perspective, um, like in the book. Uh, but that's just something that was more of a decision by everybody to not go in, and uh, I think the film as it is is just great. Don't know if that would have made the movie better, but uh, the film is definitely a classic, and uh, I'm glad to uh, rewatch it over the years and just uh, keep enjoying it. Um, yeah. Again, this is a movie that so many people have talked about over the years. That's like, it's to the point where it's hard to talk about it and bring anything new. Um, my perspective again was like, I was like twelve or thirteen when I first saw it on television, and I just got enraptured. It was just very you know, an incredible experience, I think, and uh, lovely performances. And I think uh, Brad Dorff should have won an Academy Award, honestly. Um, I know he got nominated, but I think he should have won. Um, but, uh, yeah. Glad Nicholson won. You know, this was his first Oscar, and apparently he wasn't even going to show up to the Oscars because he's a, I was, this was his fifth nomination, and he lost all the other times he was nominated, and it's like, I don't want to keep going and always losing, you know. At that point, it was like he kept losing, so why bother going to a fifth time just to sit there and lose? But um, Michael Douglas, who was the producer on this film, uh, just convinced him to go, and he did, and he won. So, yeah. Michael Douglas won his first Oscar for this film. Um, it's interesting. Since most people think of Michael Douglas as an actor only, and not so much as a producer. But he's actually produced many movies and TV shows, so I thought that was interesting to find out. Um, also, his father, Kirk, wanted to be the one to make this movie and wanted to play McMurphy. And apparently, Jack Nicholson said he, Kirk Douglas was a bit miffed at Nicholson for some time because he always wanted to play McMurphy. He thought that was the perfect role for him. And then finally the movie is made, and Kirk Douglas has nothing to do with it. And Because um, he, pl he played the character on Broadway, but the play didn't seem to do anything. It didn't really go anywhere. It wasn't that successful. Um, but who knows? Who knows if... Uh, Kirk Douglas would have been better or not. Um, you know, he was a very good actor, fine actor. Um, but Nicholson is truly McMurphy here. Um, yeah, I uh, I just love this film. Uh, that's really all I got. Um, so, uh, hope you all have a great day, great weekend, and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.